Well, it's finally arrived. My CTC 3D printer that I ordered off eBay. I ordered this primarily because of its price. It's cheap enough that I can afford it. I would love a MakerBot or anything like that, but unfortunately, I don't have the £1,000 plus to purchase one. So, bought this about three days ago. It's finally arrived. So, let's have a look inside and see what it's all about. And as I said, this was bought off eBay, and as you can see, it's definitely well sealed for transport. They used a lot of sellotape on the box. And just from the feel of it, nothing appears to move inside the box when I carried it in from the house, so it must be well packaged inside. Let's have a look. So, as you can see, it's very well packaged in the box. There are styrofoam protectors on the front, side and rear, and what appears to be cardboard packing the build area, presuming to stop anything rattling around in transit. It's not easy to get out of the box, and it is a very, very snug fit. Here we go, let's take it out of the box and have a look. So this is the back of the printer, let's turn it around and have a look, and that is the front of the printer. The printer comes with these styrofoam packaging on the side, um, I was extremely delicate at this point trying to get the packaging off as I didn't want to damage the printer, only later to find that um, these are a little bit tricky to take off and do take a bit of force, so in the end I just ended up yanking them off. So there, with the packaging off, you can now see the printer itself, along with the insides and the printer bed with the red tape on it. At the bottom you can see the LCD screen, these are the navigation buttons, and if we flip the printer around onto its side, you can see the SD card slot, which is where you load any files you want to print from. first box is purely just packaging to stop anything rattling about inside the, uh, the printer during transport, so I'll chuck that to one side. The next box here has more interesting things in it for the actual printer. So as you can see, first out of the box we have the power lead for the printer. And next out of the box we have the USB lead, which I wouldn't recommend using. Next we have these wooden triangles, which I later worked out, are stand ends for the 3D filament to sit on. Um, we have a SD card, which has various files on and instructions, etc. for the printer. Um, we have some screws and Allen keys, definitely need to keep those. And lastly is a spool holder that was printed on the machine itself. Now if we get this box out of the way, we can have a look. And that big hunk of plastic there is actually the uh, the print head. That's where I get a little bit confused. I couldn't work out how to get the boxes underneath the print bed out. That's packaging. And this is where I worked out. You can actually twist the uh, long threaded screw at the back there, which is the Z axis and move the print bed up manually, which allows you space under the print bed to pull the boxes out.
Right, and this box contains the filament you can select when you buy the printer. I chose a one kilogram reel of PLA plastic as I read that this was easier to print with. So let's take a closer look at the printer. And this is the LCD screen that gives you all the good readouts and bits of information you need. And these are the navigation buttons to get around that. And we have the build plate where all the magic happens. And yes, the machine is a little on the dusty side. I'm guessing it's been stored for quite some time. All the stepper motors are gathered on one side of the printer. As you can see here, these are the X and Y stepper motors, which are secure with zip ties for transit. And if you look under the build plate, you'll see some wires that uh, twist up past the Z axis screw. These go into the actual build plate itself as the printer does have a heated bed, which makes printing a bit easier. On the side of the printer here, you can see there is a slot for the SD card. Right onto the back of the printer, you can see here's the USB port. And on beside it we have the power connections. It's worth noting that on the bottom there is a very small switch to switch between 110 and 240 volts. Um, the other thing I would recommend for the printer is to go around and check every single screw on the printer. As um, from what I've read on the internet, they sometimes ship with very loose screws. There's one here. And as you can see this one's extremely loose. It's worthwhile just tightening up every single screw on the printer. It's a laborious task, but it's well worth doing. So, there we are. That is the unboxing of the CTC 3D printer that I bought off eBay. I plan on doing a second video which details how to attach the print head to the actual um, carriage that moves across. Uh, also in the video I'm going to do a detailed uh, explanation on how to level the print bed. This is something I have struggled with when I first bought the printer and I couldn't get any decent prints whatsoever to come off the machine itself. It took me ooh, a good two weeks. Yeah, it's a bit embarrassing I know probably. But yeah, it took me a good two weeks or so to get this thing leveled and get it all sorted. Once you get the print bed leveled and it's nice and even, the prints you get off that machine can be spectacular. I'm currently working on a project at the moment. It's a splat. It's been primed. Um, I probably should have shot this video before I uh, primed it. It's nice and smooth. It's had a little bit of detailing work done to it. It's been sanded a little bit. But the prints are very, very good. The key thing is definitely get that print bed levelled. So, if you can do me a favour, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the video and leave any comments you want below, and I do read them all. And also, if you can do me a favour and hit this subscribe box down here, it helps me out immensely. And when the video is live for the uh, print head and the bed levelling, there'll be a link up here somewhere. Until next time, take care.